Hi, welcome to Truth Sentinel, watching over the truth in the news. Today's date is uh, the 19th of May 2014. Welcome again to all listeners. Thanks for uh, staying with us and supporting us. Don't forget to subscribe to our new channel. We've had to move to Scott Sentinel rather than Caravans of Midnight due to a uh, YouTube uh, block or dispute and restrictions um, which have made it difficult to stay on that channel. Um, so try to make your way across to Scott Sentinel channel. You should find links and um, on Caravans to Midnight channel and try to resubscribe because then you'll be notified of the new videos that go up. Um, today's news, arrests over Turkish mine deaths, over 300 miners feared dead in Turkey's worst ever mine disaster. Maybe we'll talk to um, Anthony at some point and find out if he knows anything about that. Uh, China is sending five ships to evacuate Chinese nationals from Vietnam um, following um, a wave of anti-Chinese riots, apparently due to an oil, uh, oil drilling dispute. Um, Former President uh, Jimmy Carter has warned Egypt that its transition to democracy is um, faltering uh, because of uh, ahead of presidential elections later this month. Basically, he's just warning that um, they need to try to stay democratic. But then I think so does so does the USA, so does the UK. Um, Laos plane crash kills defence minister and senior officials. And when I see plane crashes with um, ministers aboard and officials, I, I often wonder whether they're accidents or not. Just saying, that's all. I don't know if there is any evidence that it isn't uh, more than an accident. Syria's air defence chief killed. The head of uh, Syria's air defences um, died fighting near the capital uh, Damascus. Uh, which is um, a blow to the regime of Bashir al-Assad. The US government has charged China with hacking. Now that's fine, but I, I would like to see charges brought against the US government and the UK government for sanctioning spying against citizens, um, as was exposed by um, Snowden regarding the NSA. So I think it is a bit rich them charging China with hacking. I mean, they were effectively hacking into people's emails and phone calls um, to log them without permission, so it seems hypocritical. Um, Abu Hamza has been charged. Um, I haven't read the full story yet, as um, internet connection out here in the English countryside is currently unusable at the moment. Um, I was in Ukraine a few weeks ago, but now I'm back in England. Probably going to be travelling again soon, not sure where the destination is. Probably Europe, maybe going back to Thailand later. Um, I'll keep you posted, but currently in the English countryside, very beautiful and tranquil here. Uh, so anyway, Abu Hamza has been charged. Um, I'll, I'll find out more about that and maybe we'll talk about some of that on the next Truth Sentinel. This is the same Abu Hamza that um, apparently was involved in the 9-11 uh, bomb bombings, uh, coordinating some of it from the UK. Um, it took 10 years to kick him out of the country despite the fact he was um, openly, apparently and allegedly saying that, um, you know, basically we're all infidels and uh, we should all be attacked. Um, so um, basically it took 10 years and um, I did hear that in his trial he alleged he worked for MI5, which um, these days actually would not surprise me at all if it was true. There's been floods in the Balkans um, this week, landslides in Bosnia, um, lots of buried houses um, and uh, water levels on the river Sava are expected to peak uh, later threatening the um, country's biggest power plant. More than more than 35 dead and uh, tens of thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes. Floods also affecting Croatia. In the week um, the Daily Mail in the UK says that studies show internet use harms a child's mental health and there's been a lot of articles this week um, sort of negatively portraying the internet. I mean, whilst the internet definitely does have some negative aspects, I mean, I think um, 
I myself probably spend way too long on it. Um, there, there are a number of laws coming into effect also that will censor the internet. There seems to be a lot of negative articles, as like, like this one in the Daily Mail, saying it's affecting mental health. But also, lots of articles talking about new laws that are coming in to censor the internet. Uh, the European Court of Justice ruled that um, search operators such as Google must remove all materials requested by someone who doesn't want it there. Now, of course, that could be useful if there is something malicious or incorrect, but, um, you know, it hasn't been stipulated as to who it applies to. I mean, does it, does it apply to truthful, factual information uh, about injustices or cover-ups, for example? And if someone doesn't want that information on the internet, they could just request that it's taken away. I mean, is this the start of real censorship of the internet? I mean... There are also articles about teen suicides and the such like. Um, and whilst these are terrible, I mean, these are cases of internet bullying. I can't help thinking there's also could be an agenda to take control of the internet, to make it, turn it into something negative, to censor it, and to make it, again, uh, whilst the internet here in the English countryside is unusable due to the internet strength, maybe later it's going to become unusable or you, people aren't going, going to want to use it because it's too heavily censored. Or maybe you'll have to pay for every site that you visit. It remains to be seen, but I, I would enjoy it while you can as I think the um, the internet of the future will be potentially very different from how it is now. There's also this week fury as a Turkish, um, the Turkish PM aide kicked a landmine protester whilst he was being held down by two soldiers. It actually made him look really stupid because he was there in his suit. You had two soldiers ha holding down this protester who was, who had, was protesting against quite a noble cause, landmines, getting rid of landmines, and he's kicking him uh, while he's on the ground. It just, it made him look pathetic in my opinion. There's also been a lot of talk this week about Boko Haram in the news uh, and there's obviously something going on in Nigeria. Um, everyone seems to be getting involved um, and the, the big story was the uh, kidnapped 200 schoolgirls and uh, we're going to keep an eye on events there. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what's going on but I don't think the, the main story is, is really what's going on there. I think something else is happening there. Roundup of last week's uh, last week's episode, we talked about UFOs and Ukraine. Um, quite, you know, not 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 together. Although there was uh, there were sightings of a um, a UFO over Ukraine, um, but it's supposedly supposed to be um, the latest in technology from the U.S. military. Kind of like it's called a flying dreadnought, so it's not actually from outer space. It's uh, from from Earth, um, and I actually, I've got a feeling I may have seen it as I was leaving on the plane. I saw this long, long, long grey cigar-shaped object uh, which was hovering near a cloud, and I stared at it for a long time, trying to work out if it was a very weirdly shaped uh, cloud um, or whether it was some kind of object. But then I found out about these uh, flying dreadnoughts, which are kind of long grey cigar-shaped things. So maybe it was that. And they, there was one, uh, there was a, one or two spotted in Ukraine, so it could it could tie in. Um, remember to leave your comments in the comments section if you want us to talk about any particular subjects. Today's show is going to be a very philosophical, relaxing show where I'm going to be talking to a Chicago taxi driver who has uh, more than 70,000 followers on Twitter and has done his own radio blogs uh, on various topics related to world events and um, to what some people label as conspiracies but as um, as a lot of us know um, conspiracies, conspiracies are often closer to the truth than most people would care to believe um, we're just going to have a relaxed informal chat about everything uh, do a search on John Gary, uh, that's J-O-N-G-E-R-Y, uh, and you'll find that he's someone who might, who people might label as a conspiracy theorist. But really, he's just someone who doesn't buy the lies that he's being told by our governments, and just wants justice and to know the truth, much like, um, which is basically a lot of what this show is about. So he's perfect for Truth Sentinel. Um, so settle down, relax, and join us as we talk about the state of the world in general. Hello, John. Welcome to Truth Sentinel. 
Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, just um, relaxing here in the English countryside. How's things in Chicago? Good. I, I wanted to, first of all, thank you for um, in, in this interview. And I, I think it's um, it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that it hasn't happened sooner that someone uh, searched me out. I, I, yeah, I have searched out some others, and it's fun to... Uh, get together and have a you know a deeper conversation about some things that are happening and I, I think it's a we are in a state where it uh, it's time to uh, definitely start talking about uh, more serious uh, topics there it is indeed yeah can you can you just tell us a little bit about how you uh, got all these followers on Twitter um, from being a cab driver and uh, why you started doing uh, radio blogs as well yeah that's a good good question I I I mean, I put a lot of work into it, so uh, there's, there's, I don't, I, I follow back whoever follows me, so that makes uh, things a lot easier. Um, why did I start to do it? I, I suppose it's just that I, I, I have to go, you have to always go back to 9-11, and if you, if you have if you, the opinion that I have that this was a false flag event, then you hear the uh, the fire alarm, and so you, you have to uh, start reaching out. And if if you can't reach out to your immediate surroundings, your your family or your friends, they just don't get it. Uh, you you have to search out something else to to find a, a comfort uh, comfort zone somewhere else to, to to relay how you're feeling. And so it's uh it's it's therapeutic as well just to. And, it, and it's, it's what's so cool about this whole thing is that uh, here you are uh, in another country and and that's the way it's gone. And, I, and I've been very happy too with it, with talking to people uh, from other countries as well. So and, and a lot of us have the same feelings. So that's that's kind of what, you know it became like a passion uh, for me to, to get involved in this. And do you still have that passion at the moment? Every single day I invest. Um, I would say that when I come home from work, I would say two hours of my day is spent kind of checking on uh, what is going on. And now I have my website, it's slingshotradio.com. I think it's uh, you know has, has plenty of news to investigate there. So I, I go there, I, I check out the stories, I, I tweet um, probably at least 10, 10 things per day that I think are pretty important. And it's it's things that uh, you can um, hopefully that you, you can <laughs> later on. I go for a walk. I put the headphones on, and I'm listening to something, and educating myself while I'm uh, getting some physical activity. I think that that's healthy to do. And so I, I usually try to find something. I hope that uh, there's something on there for someone else to uh, to learn about learn about something. Yeah, I've been trying to do some physical activity lately as well, but um, it's a lot easier to talk about and think about than to actually do. Yeah, and that and that's that's actually a, a problem because we're all. Uh, if you do think that this is a very important thing, and so you, yeah, you don't want to just keep sitting, so it's good to uh, include uh, some exercise and th and throw the throw the headphones on and, and get your. Uh, your radio or your, you know, an interview like this or whatever it is that you can to uh, further uh, your understanding about what's going on here on the planet. Do you, do you uh, talk about um, a lot of events or conspiracies or news with your passengers? <laughs> there, uh, here and there, but I would say that that's uh, far and in between. It's not a. I would say most people are are really not uh, open to that. I, you can hear. I would say that it's it's moving. Uh, people are have said some surprising things to me even today. So I guess I don't bring it up. So no, I, I would say that for the most part there there have been some conversations along those lines, but uh, they're few and far between. Have you had any particularly interesting people in your cab that have uh, revealed any information to you? Uh, th this morning, someone mentioned something uh, to the effect of the government is uh, intruding into uh, into more of our lives and uh, we into healthcare and into 
uh, the, she's a school teacher and they're into the school system now. So, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned something else and I actually mentioned about how I saw the USDA had, United States Department of Agriculture had uh, requ acquired uh, munitions and I think an alarming, well, I think they 30, 30 round uh, guns or something, uh, some submachine gun type thing, or whatever. I don't know. It, it, it just whatever. It was it was uh, alarming once again. And why is the United States Department of Agriculture employees have to have uh, these these this weaponry? And this is this has been a trend uh, throughout the government. So why are they arming themselves? Mm -hmm. And uh, the conclude the thing that I'm thinking is that they're anticipating um, some type of uh, collapse or in a, in a big event. That, so, Do you think it could be um, like a financial collapse or that there could be some calamity coming they know about or, or something else? I'm sure that they, they know, uh, whoever is at the top of this pyramid knows, I, I, the, all the world is a stage, I think that they know exactly um, probably the, the, the time sequence about when the um, the shit hits the fan, and so someone uh, or some group knows uh, what what uh, what's going to happen. But I would say no one, for the most part, no one. All those government employees are most for the most part don't know what's going to happen. Do you think um, it seems like more and more people are becoming interested in um, sort of cover-ups and conspiracies? Why do you think that is? Do you, um, I mean, if you found that as well, um, why do you think people are sort of start, uh, starting to disbelieve the official line these days? I hope that's the case. Yeah, I would say that the, the, the majority of, oh, I don't want to, what, what kind of number could I put on it? And certainly three out of five people uh are not interested at all, I would say. Yeah, that's uh, probably right. And uh, maybe one of them out of the five is is, is starting to question things. Yeah, and, and the, certainly the the mainstream media has taken such a hit, and even even in the last year, it, I, I, it's as if we're winning that part of the argument. That the that uh, certainly, and that's a it's a big it's a big victory. That you're actually, when you're watching these, like CNN, you're watching it and you're and you're asking yourself, okay, what type of message are they trying to uh, convey to us? What are they trying to tell us? What what is their agenda? What what are they doing here? And I, and I'll go so far as they, they there was there was fires in Southern California, and and I you know as as a conspiracy theorist, you know you you're, you're questioning. Everything and even these fires were, were in San Diego area, I think. And I, my first think thoughts are that are they setting those fires? And are they are they keeping us in tension? And that and that's part of their strategy that we're always supposed to be in tension, uh, under under tension, and that we're, we're, they don't want us to be able to really have uh, life, liberty, and, and the real pursuit of happiness. They don't want us to have the ability to, to extra time and, and to, to that would it be to, to think and to, and to prosper. In, in, as, as, and that, that's, quite a, that's quite a thing to say, I suppose, because a lot of people obviously uh, do prosper. And, and, but a lot of us just don't have the time to really put two and two together I, I would say that I I have had that and one one of the reasons is that I, I don't have a, a, a vast I don't have a family I do, I'm not married I don't have children I so I've in that in that time period that we just talked about earlier about investing that two hours uh, during the day a lot of people don't have any of that time uh, nor do they are they really trying to, unfortunately, I don't think they're trying to uh, find that time. And they're just, they're just under stress. Yeah, and especially, I think that's, especially people with, um, with families. I mean, 
if you've got children, I guess that's going to be your your objective in the day is to just make sure everything's okay and help help organize their day. So especially families don't particularly have that time at all. That two hours is gone. The two hours that I'm investing in, in, in my discovery, uh, that's lost in, in their commitment to their family. So, we're, I mean, I'm under, I guess I'm under tension as well. It, it, it's, I work seven days a week. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not an easy, easy road for me, uh, to, to do this and to, to, and then I said, uh, adding other things into it that are along those lines of, of discovery and, and also, um, investing in this website and, and development of that as well. And, and so have you always worked seven days a week or, or would you find in the cost of living is going up so you've had to to do that now i would say that in 2009 i definitely had some struggles there in 2008 2009 it might have been those two years there where where gas surged to almost five dollars a gallon and that was it moved too high too fast so i didn't have the same type of money that i was used to and so um i i kind of fell i fell down like a lot of people did in those two years i've, I've talked to a lot of people that had some troubles and uh but i, w I would say that it, it, it's kind of built in the taxi driver has to kind of a taxi driver pretty much has to work 50 to 60 hours a week so I wouldn't say that that uh, no that it, as far as the economy goes, I don't think it really applies uh, to us necessarily. It, it, and now things are almost still five dollars. Now it's down to uh, here it's uh, four twenty-five a gallon. But we've all gotten new different cars now. We have cars that are uh, hybrids and get better gas mileage. And before we were driving cars that uh, did not get those good gas mileage. So. And do you um do you enjoy your job? It took a long time for me to enjoy that job. I always thought that I, I should be doing something better. It has, a, has kind of a negative um, stigma to it. And I thought that I should be doing something better or something. Uh, I should be in a suit and tie or I should be. Uh, but uh, I would say I think I've done it for 17, 16 or 17 years now. And I would say certainly the first ten, and on and off, I, I did it. I, I didn't. I I moved away a couple twice and came back to it twice. So I would say that certainly after the second time I came back, that I started to realize that this is what I do and this is how I how I survive and and I I I must like it and that I, I don't. I wouldn't say that I love it, but I would say that. You know, I don't know how everyone else is, but I know that, you know, before you go to work, you're thinking, ah, ah. you know, you don't want to, uh, you know, do this. But especially if it's seven days, you know, you want to um, take off. Uh, but once I'm in and then I'm, I'm relaxed, I, I love I love music. I love once again, I have the opportunity to flip on some YouTube and listen to something. I can get something done, get more discovery once again in the cab. A lot of people don't have that opportunity either while they're at work to say, you know, I'm listening to this I'm, I'm, or I'm pulled over and I'm going to read this. So the, the cab driver and the cab driver has the, has the opportunity to think for himself if the conversation isn't going on with the passenger. So this uh, discovery process is, is, is good for the cab driver. Who do you like to listen to? Who do I like to listen to? It changes all the time, but I uh, lately I've been gone back to uh, back to Alex Jones, uh, and I, I, I like I like some of his humor, and I like some of his his talking points. I, I think he gets it done. I don't think he he doesn't uh, nail it, and the reason he can't nail it is because it would upset too many people. And so he, he kind of uh, gives you, uh, he takes you 80% there, which is, is, is pretty far. And he, he, he hits it, he hits it pretty good. Uh, I've listened to Michael Rivero 
um, recently I've listened to um, who else even the Celtic rebel uh, Oracle broadcasting at one time I, I enjoyed listening to those uh, guys they kind of uh, uh, pushed the uh, pushed the envelope even farther and uh, Stefan Molyneux uh, today I listened to uh, a debate about anarchism and uh, on anarchism um, with uh, I think it's the folk capitalist I saw there on on his uh, Twitter account I think it's called uh, which I Jason Herb I think is his name uh, from Oracle and so uh, yeah I, and I have uh, uh, all sorts of uh, on my website you know for, for radio to go to and, and, and listen to uh, I guess it, 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 when you when you when you set up, sometimes it'll say what to watch on your YouTube, you know, and you, it, it sets it kind of sets you up, and it, it, it it's programmed to to suddenly know what you want, and then usually there is something there that I kind of like, so that's that's even though they they kind of got you uh, labeled, uh, so is it, so be it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's there's lots of shows out there. I like listening to Alex Jones as well. I mean, I, I I don't tend to listen to him late at night because I, I quite like listening to a show that um, that's sort of someone with a relaxing voice and then I can sort of drift off to sleep. <laughs> but with Alex Jones, you can't always do that. But I, I do think, um, yeah, he's um, he's very passionate and I think he's he definitely believes in what he's saying. And um, so, yeah, and he's always he's always um, done his research and um, talking about current events. So. It's always good listening to him as well. Yeah, he pushes the the, the Christian. Uh, he, he appeals to the the Christian right uh, conservative crowd, and so you know, I that's uh, religion isn't really my my thing. So, uh, but you know, I think he knows how to. I mean, I, I some people say that he's you know like a working for the new world order but i i just don't i don't, I don't really so. buy into that angle yeah no, i don't see how um number one how he would he's a good actor if if that's true and what benefit would it be i mean no i don't i don't buy that either yeah he punches too many holes in in, in their argument so in, into into their message into their plan i think so yeah and i if he is it's, it's it doesn't seem like a very good strategy yeah unless it is unless it is to create more tension or uh, to to get us angry or something and to to uh try to get us to uh to do something or uh, to create some you know some type of uh civil war type of thing that's the only thing i could I could think of uh, with that. I, yeah. I, I like I said, I, I like. I'll give you just something that I, I heard him say the other day, I, which I love. He says something to the effect of, uh, "You know, you you think you're free, and and, and you're not." And then he'll he used the phrase, uh, "What is this system? It's it's too high tech for you to figure out." You know what is nine eleven? You you can't figure that out. What happened there? What that's too high tech for you? So you know that's that's a phrase I'll be using when I, when I'm running around. That you know that uh, I have to tell people what, what what's at this point. It's it's yeah. It, it's been quite a development process because when you when I first started talking to people, I kind of felt like maybe I was wrong, <laughs> but no. Uh, Matt, when you really start to get into it, you find out that the other person hasn't really made the investment that you've made. Yeah, they haven't true. looked at the details. So now you have to turn it on them. And, and it, because you know that, the, and I, I feel bad because a lot of these people are, they just want to raise their kids and they just want to have a, a, go to work and just, just have this simple lifestyle. And, but when it comes to the argument, they they ought to they ought to listen to someone that that has made the investment, that, because it ultimately it comes down they don't want to hear it they don't want it they don't think it's true, uh, they're offended by some things that I I, I have to say and, but, uh, eventually like I said you realize that they they haven't they haven't made the 
discovery process. They haven't they haven't gone to where you've gone. Yeah, so. it's true. I was going to ask you though. Do you think some people go too far? I mean, um, it seems like there's some people who maybe see a conspiracy in absolutely everything, and um, you know they don't trust anyone. I mean, is there a danger that you could become too paranoid? Do you think? Um. Well, I'll say once again, when, when I saw that, uh, what's the name of where they're all looking for those girls in Nigeria, or Nigeria. Boku Haram, the, the, the yeah, terrorist group? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw that, I said to myself, uh, this doesn't look right. This looks staged. This looks like the Osama bin Laden character. He's speaking in English. He's, he's, he's banging his, he's, he's raising his rifle over his head and, all of his comrades are around them, and you, you know, there's ten or twelve with rifles. You know, you don't see like a hundred or three hundred, or you know, it just looks it looks staged. And so I thought this is staged, and and then it, and then I saw something to the effect of uh, the military wasn't going to use drone. We were going to send our troops in there or something to go find these girls, but we weren't going to use the drones. And I was thinking, oh. You want to use the drones everywhere, but now when it's, there's 300 girls missing, you, you don't want to use the drones. That's, that, some, that doesn't make sense. That, 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 so, yeah, I think yeah, I think going too far for a conspiracy. I, I would say that there are people that you'll meet that, yeah, I, I suppose, I suppose they they actually do go too far. Uh, and I would say these, uh, well, the ones that trouble me, I suppose, is somebody in sports to say, oh, you know, that guy missed the the, the free throw at the end of the game. He did it on purpose. I, I don't see it so much in sports, but it, it's there too, I'm sure, here and there. But uh, I, that's not the, the, the new order uh, conspiracy. And I would say, uh, to start with, you have to be very skeptical right from the start because it, this it is a massive, it is a massive conspiracy that, that's at play here. It is, it is, it is in, it, it is in so much around us and, and in the very conversations that you have with other people. So it's as if they are programmed. And so the mind control is, is coming out of that television set and programming everyone. So it, it is, it is massive. So is it, is it to say is, is it too much? I, I would say the, the, the biggest fear is, is too little to think that the, the conspiracy is too little. So that, that's what I would say to that. Okay, yeah, no. I mean, I, I tend to agree with you, to be honest. I mean, when I saw Michelle Obama showing um, concern for the uh, Nigerian girls, whenever I see um, whenever I see world leaders or their families expressing concern, I become concerned because I don't think they do care a lot about people. So when they show concern, it just seems like they're up to something. What are they up to? So I, I'm not sure what's going on with that Nigerian girl story but it's definitely something going on no uh, it's 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 basically i would say that it's the terrorist organization that that they fund that they created this boku haram is there to create tension in the area there's oil there they want to disrupt uh the pro the the to say the government that is there or uh, have an influence in the in the in the government process and to cause uh, all oil is their oil, according to them, I would say, and 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 that they want to get their troops in there, and their Africom uh, troops, and there's a way to do it to to, to find uh, these terrorists, and if if you want to slaughter uh, Christians, and uh, so they use this um, this extremist. Muslim religious fanaticism to to further actually further their cause. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I see with, uh, with with that. What's going on with that? I mean, I mean that's that's that has to be uncomfortable for some people to, to think. But I, I that's that's uh, that's the way I I, I know Mr. Jones uh, thinks that too as as well. 
Yeah, um, I, did you see that speech with Obama when he was, uh, he came back from Malaysia and he was joking about, um, he had a lot of jokes about, uh, and I, it actually did shock me because he was joking about MH370 and making jokes about missing people making their way to chairs and stuff. He'd just come back from Malaysia. Um, you know, I mean, there's 239 missing people on that plane, presumed dead, so you would think it's a bit insensitive to joke about that. And he was joking about the NSA, and he was joking about Putin's chest and, and Obamacare and stuff like that. I mean, did you see that, and what did you think about that? I, I, I didn't I didn't see that. No, I, I don't know what... Uh... What is MH370? Ah, oh, MH370 was the missing Malaysian plane that um, dis oh, that disappeared, <laughs> um, you know, a couple of months ago and it hasn't been seen since. Once again, I mean, I, I I saw it and my first thoughts after, at first I didn't, I didn't want to pay attention to it when I first saw it. I said to myself, I, I don't even want to look at this. I was like, well, this doesn't make any, right, right away, I, did, all, I, just did, I didn't even, I don't need one more thing on my plate. I thought mm -hmm. to myself, this is just absurd, and I didn't, I didn't, uh, and then as it kept going on, you know, it's, it, you know, I, I rarely even turn that television on, you know, it, 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 all of a sudden I'm doing my laundry somewhere, and I look, and there, there's the television, I'm watching this plane, I'm thinking, no, you know, it, something's not right here, and I, and, as, and there's something I kept thinking, wow, they're still talking about that plane, they can't, they can't find it? It just it just uh, doesn't make any sense. So I would say con conspiracy alarms once again off. off oh, the absolutely, charts. yeah. I mean, and um, do you think we'll ever find the truth out about some of these conspiracies, like that that plane and nine eleven and some of the other big events that have um, people brand uh, conspiracy theories? Um, it just seems like everyone's searching for uh, the truth, but. Are we ever going to find out the complete answers to any of these things? As far as 9/11 goes, there, there's there's basically no doubt about it. There's there's no doubt about what happened. The evidence is overwhelming, and anyone that did any type of research at all would 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 come to that conclusion. There's there's just an abundance of evidence. So it it, it takes it just takes someone to look at it. There's no other. There's no other. Any any type of. Uh, you'd have to, you'd have to be insane not to, uh, not to see it. So and I, and I I just know that there's people that haven't, haven't looked at it. So that they can't. So from that that one I suppose is. Uh, that one it has so much evidence that it's it's, it's hard not to. It would be very, very difficult, I would assume. To, 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 there there to is not. a lot of evidence that that something's up. That's a bit of an understatement, but just the finer details, like uh, you know, the Pentagon. I, I when when people said um, there was no plane that hit the Pentagon, I thought, well, I thought, well, why um, why would they need to pretend a plane had hit the Pentagon? And then, I mean, the other day I saw a video where it shows the explosion, and there was no sign of any plane at all. And then if you think about it, it would be extremely hard to fly a plane that low. A lot of pilots would say, have said, a lot of professional pilots said it would be impossible at that speed to fly that low and hit there. And, um, and that they, they've had, they had some lamp posts, you know, some uh, lights that were supposedly knocked down by the wings. And someone else said if it had hit the wings, that they would, it would have just tumbled and there'd be wreckage everywhere. So, it's just it's just very odd, you know. It's it's really hard to work out why, you know. I mean, I've heard there's it was pretend, you know, possibly a missile, but why did they have to pretend it was a plane? What happened to the plane? There's just so many questions, and I think a lot of people don't, and and I'm one of them. I don't like having so many unanswered questions. I, I want to know exactly what happened, and it's quite perplexing. I think sometimes with these things to try to, you want somebody to come along with all the answers, but it seems like everyone comes along with bits of the answers and, and certain ideas, you know, do you well, feel the, the same? The most, the, of course, the, the most important people aren't being asked any questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're not going to get any answers until, until the most important people are, are questioned. So the the press isn't asking the questions that you're you're you you want answered, and you're never going to get the answers to those until the questions are asked directly. That's why this guy uh, Luke Rudkowski 
from We Are Change. He's one of the boldest uh, journalists uh, out there. He he runs around and, and aggravates them all over the all over the place. He's, I mean, he gets in Henry Kissinger's face. I think more than once. Yeah, yeah, he's an amazing amazing uh, guy with a lot of uh, courage uh, to to ask these questions. And so he yeah he comes right at them. And I can't think of anyone else. I can't think of a single person on the planet other than him that's asked some serious questions about the the ones that you're talking about. As far as 9/11 and the Pentagon goes, as you know, as well too, I don't think it matters much whether a missile hit it or a plane hit it. But you know, there's there's 90 plus cameras on the front of the Pentagon. Why can't we see the video of the plane hitting or the missile? <laughs> Why can't we see the video footage of the plane hitting the Pentagon? Why, why, isn't that an interesting thing for people to see? Of course, they'll Let's turn around and say, um, for reasons of national security, you, you can't have that information. Yeah, it's always it's always something. So, yeah, it, it round and round it goes. But uh, I, I I seem to have seen some video footage. It looked like uh, of it looked like a missile to me. So I, that's the footage I've. I've seen of something, and then they, they went around and took all the cameras, I supposedly, uh, around the, the Pentagon and, and confiscated the, uh, the video footage from, I think it was a hotel and a gas station. Why? Well, you know, why? Uh, uh, I have, you know, it doesn't matter whether, like I said, whether or not you think that it was the uh, planes, uh, how, how it necessarily happened, but we know it happened and we know there's a conspiracy that, uh, for it to happen. And as far as even the planes that hit the World Trade Center, I, I would say that I would lean, let's just say 60% that, that they weren't even uh, the uh, United, Air, United Airlines uh, flight. I, I think they might have been government uh, planes. I mean, I, I watched a video just recently just where numerous people said that they saw a, a, a black plane, a firefighter. There was a gray plane. I saw a gray plane. It, what didn't, it didn't have any colors on it or such. I mean, I heard about 10 people say that. That, were th that, that day, the day that it happened, what did you see? Oh, I saw a gray plane hit the building. And it, we have no evidence that, that video evidence other than that that any you can't see any colors from from what it looks like um, it would be very difficult to, to from what I understand to actually hit the target uh, at, at that speed um, and did the hijackers do it there's there's not even evidence that the hijackers were on the planes they don't have any uh, <laughs> they, they weren't on the passenger lists <laughs> I heard that the, those planes weren't even flying at that time of day. Anyway, the, those actual flight numbers. I mean, that's the thing. It's like the more you, um, the more you research, the more you find, or at least you think you find. I mean, how how on earth do we, how do we on earth do we know what's the truth and what isn't? That, that's what I find difficult. It's like well, yeah, yeah. It, well, you, well you, first you have to punch holes in it. I mean, uh, the hijackers, how many of them were, were still alive after they said, these are the hijackers? Well, they started appearing. Oh, no, I'm still alive. I'm over here. What are you talking about? And even even when they knew that, the 9-11 Report Commission uh, still said that these were the guys. I mean, Mohammed Atta, they showed him at the, at the airport in, I think, the, the plane that hit the World Trade Center left from Boston. And I think it was a connecting flight, supposedly, that Atta took. And they showed a picture of him at the airport, uh, but taking the connecting flight. They never showed him uh, boarding uh, through security in Boston. So there's just so many holes. You can go on and on about the, the problems with this event. It's, it's, if you, I know it sounded like you've done your homework as well, just by what you said about the the light pole that was knocked down 
I mean, you, you, you know, you, you start looking around. You say, you know, I remember them talking about the light pole being knocked down over by near the Pentagon, and the cab. There was a cab driver too, and and some of it becomes very foggy as now as time goes on. You you, you kind of start to forget all of the things that you've you've learned about it. But yeah, there's 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 just that event is filled with 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 questions. I think a lot of these events are. I mean, the Boston bombing as well. I mean, when that when that uh, friend of one of the bombers um, got interviewed and then got got shot in the head, and he said to his friend before he, you know, they're going to kill me, and the, and uh, and they did. They killed him. You know, uh, we're supposed to just believe that he must have lunged at them during the interview. Yeah, that, that part that's uh, that that part's shocking and and sad and. Uh, something real wrong happened in that in that particular part of it and the other parts you know are that doesn't see does some doesn't fit right with all of that as well as you know he that supposedly one of the brothers runs over his own brother or something and that's how he dies uh, there's a naked guy that they find uh, they have him in handcuffs or something as the, the, the police footage shows it looks like one of the brothers and and once again we just don't get the questions we don't have the reporters asking what's really going on here i mean that that's one thing i, I am i wish if i had the funding for it, or i wish alex jones would do it is to have a, a real investigative crew you hit the streets once these events happen and, and, and get in there and, and interview and find out what's going on because that right now we don't we don't even have that. We don't we don't have enough uh, people with microphones that we can trust asking the right questions. We really don't. I mean um, when Ed, Edward Snowden revealed all that the information about the NSA uh, Glenn Greenwald was seen to be attacked by fellow journalists for doing any investigative reporting, you know, for, for helping reveal those uh, revelations. Yeah, Glenn. Uh, that that you're right, and, and Glenn's not even on board with with uh, this perspective. Glenn Glenn is still hiding a little bit, so. Yeah, he's not even, and he's just being attacked uh, uh, for for stepping his foot in the water. I would say, I'd say Glenn is. Uh, I guess I would say Glenn's fifty percent of the way. That, you know, put one foot in the water. He's got his other foot still on the shore. But you're right. After getting ridiculed or, or um, questioned himself, then. Uh, you know, maybe he's turning. Maybe he'll put the other foot in the water. But I, I, I I'm still not. Uh, Mr. Greenwald is is not a, an article that I would I would say I'm, I really want to see. I, I wouldn't say that he's uh, interested. I guess in what Snowden has to say through him. But other than that, I <laughs> not a big fan of Mr. Uh, Greenwald, he's he's not going to get it done. Uh, what did you? Th what was the um? What was the response, and what is still the response about the NSA revelations that were all being spied upon all the time? I mean, when I, I when I told someone at work about it, and uh, and I thought I'd get the reaction like, yeah, this is disgusting, you know. Um, he was just he was one of those people who turned around and said, well, you know, no problem if you've got nothing to hide, nothing to worry about, you know. What what was the um, response in in the USA about all those uh, the NSA revelations by Snowden? I, I would say that well, there there is some good news on that. I, I would say that I, I think the younger generation here here and there. I think that they've they've gotten to the point where they've become. They, they I've gotten to the point where I, I actually think that they're actually starting to mock Obama. Like whatever he says is, they're just they're starting to laugh. I I I don't think that they, and I don't think that they like it, and I don't think that a lot of them even still understand what happened on 9/11. Uh, so I think it all it all starts there. You, you, you know, you you can't get your big surveillance society without without 9/11. 
So that's obviously why they why they pushed that, and then they wanted to push into their uh, into their war as well, into all their wars in the Middle East as well. So there, there's probably more than more than a few objectives about why that event happened. But certainly, uh, if you believe that Osama bin Laden uh, was the big terrorist behind this event, then I suppose you you could make a case. So I, I don't mind. Uh, it, it, we're we're looking for these Muslim terrorists all over our country, uh, which, which makes no sense because if if you have an Im open immigration policy, where you, you don't check, uh, you don't care, uh, anyone can come and, and it's it's uh, it doesn't you can stay as long as you want. There's no no one's throwing you out, so it doesn't matter who you are, uh, just just come. So. Uh, if there's all these Muslim terrorists and you're so worried about them, uh, why are you? Why do you have an open border? It doesn't make any sense, and, and none of it makes sense because none of it's uh, everything that they tell you on that on that television set is is, is nonsense, and it just creates some type of uh, fantasy world for the the average person to. You'd have to you have to be really really gullible and really. Uh, into little league games for your kids because you're not you're not looking at anything else. Did so. um did a lot of people believe that Osama bin Laden been buried at sea that time? Um, even though <laughs> they, were, they didn't mind that there was no body or no photos or anything. I I think people really have to start. Yeah, they they need some photos, right? They they need to really get some hard evidence about what happened. You can't just turn on CNN and 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 they're going to tell you. But there's missing links all over the place, and 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 then they'll tell you, oh, you know, they don't want to show any pictures because it's uh, it's going to offend someone. Well, it was pretty offensive, uh, if if according to what they, their story that Osama bin Laden did this event. Uh, I I think they owe it to the world. They owe it to at this point. We need we need to. To really know what's going on, and the only way we can know is we're big boys and girls now. Let's uh, let's get these uh, pictures and videos, and, and that's what we we have to see. We for most I most people probably I would say once again sixty percent of the people probably trust <laughs> this this ridiculous uh, television set and what it has to say. Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, it, it's so. It, but there's a, another say certainly 20 percent of us want to see the pictures and we don't we're, we're done we're just shaking our head thinking you, you got to do better than that it's the, the storylines some of these things it is sad that the 60 percent are actually so childish so childlike so accepting so uh, just absurd it's to 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 accept that storyline once again it has questions and they're not being answered so over and over it and it seems it seems to me like they're becoming more and more um, lax in their cover-ups because they realize they can just get away with it you know they can just turn around it seems like you know with the Osama bin Laden burial at sea with no body it seems like they probably thought thought for a couple of minutes about how they were going to cover that up and said well we could just say this you know and they did it, and they, and they got away with it, and they just think, well, we don't need to spend too much money covering up stuff, and we'll just give out, we'll just say anything. Nobody cares anymore. That that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the, with uh, what was the one of the Benghazi as well, full of questions, full of holes, and they they come out with that absurd video that this is why it happened, and once again. Uh, it, it gets blocked and, and stopped, and uh, I mean, it. it I, 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 I suppose if if the truth came out about what happened in, in some of these things, then you, you the people would have the right to say that there's been a, a breach of trust, and that the government needs to be dissolved. So I guess they're all threatened as well. By by the truth, the, the truth can't come out. There's too much money at stake 
for all involved and and that's that's one of the big reasons why the american people are 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 buying into this fantasy it's because without the fantasy their pension checks are going to dissolve and they're um, not going to be able to um, suck off the tit of the golden cow so <laughs> it's it's uh the, it's it's just there to uh it's there to stay they they, they love it overall uh, they they the 60 percent um they they love this they love this thing they they think that their military is doing good things and they uh what, what can you say about them other than that uh, it's hard to because you, you think your your friends and family are are a lot of them are in that in that category, and no matter what what you say, I I I I, I would say on Facebook it's, it's been troubling to watch uh, your friends and family um, to watch where their concentration is. Um, what they have to say uh, and, and what they have to ignore. It's pretty, it's pretty sad. Is there any concern with uh, people in the U.S. Um, about the state of the economy there? I mean, it seems like it could potentially crash uh, sort of this year maybe with, with the U.S. debt. I mean, we've got the same problem over here in, in the U.K., but are people concerned about that? Do, do people think that there's going to be an economic crash, which some people are predicting? What do you think? I, I, with that one, I've always just said every year I'll make my little prediction. And I, I said uh, last year I said it wouldn't happen. And I, I, I said this year it won't happen. And I suppose by the end of uh, 2014, I would make my prediction for 2015. Uh, I guess at this point, uh, no, I think it's uh, we're fine. 2014 will be fine. It's just going to be just play out this fantasy. Everything's uh, fine. Just keep stacking up the numbers, and uh, I think they got a ways to go. I think they can they can pull this thing. Uh, I would say probably right now, an early prediction. I would say probably. I wouldn't certainly want to would want to say 2016, but uh, probably 2015 they can run this out too. I or probably they'll. Uh, Hillary and the, I can already see the new election coming around and. Um, it's just the numbers, just stack them one after the other. And, and like I said, once again, why would anyone want to challenge the system? To challenge the numbers and, and the, the, the validity to uh, the integrity of these numbers. So there's no, everyone wants to just pretend that this thing is, is solvent, it's going to, going to work. So there's, there's it'll, I, I don't see any, any, uh, I do, once again, I, I do think that the big uh, people at the top of the pyramid, they, they know what year this thing's going to fade out. And uh, it's, uh, Alan Watt would be another person that I, I, I respect listening to. I used to listen to a lot of, of his radio, and he took a long break as well, it seems. Uh, I'm not, I haven't been back to his site much lately. But, uh, you know, he, he really pushes that, that this world is a stage. And I, and I agree with him. I, I actually think Alan Watt too is is one of the uh, a real a real interesting uh, intelligent person to uh, listen to. Is he available on YouTube? I mean, I haven't heard of him because you know, obviously, I'm in the UK, and maybe he's on. Is he on mainstream uh, radio channel or um, how can, can, uh, can I? His website to him is YouTube? sure. Yeah, Alan Watt. There's an Alan Watts that's like a philosopher or some sort with an S, but this is just Alan Watt. He's been on uh, Alexis Jones' uh, show. He has his uh, website. It's called cuttingthroughthematrix.com. And that's another person, Mark Passio. I've been really impressed by some of the things he's had to say. I found uh, him, him to be kind of uh, passionate about some things and inspiring. Um, and I, I, I really got a kick out of, uh, I haven't seen the Matrix movie, but he did a, um, a, a critique of, of the movie, and he laid it out what he the way he thought the movie what it was trying to say, and I, I really enjoyed that. I think that's two hours long. 
uh, the Matrix trilogy uh, by Mark Passio, and I, I really got a lot out of that. I thought that was that was real good too. But you didn't see the movie. I didn't see the movie, no. And I, but I feel like I definitely, you know, want to make sure that I relay that. Yeah, we are in the Matrix. There's, there's no doubt about it. We, we, we are in the Matrix right now. And uh, this is an information war right now. We are in an information war, and if you don't participate in it, then you are leaving the future. In a in a in a putting, if not our own future, uh, you're you're leaving. We're going to lose, and we're, and I think we're going to lose big. So the consequences of sitting this one out in this information war, and that's why, like I started from the beginning about how I, I really wanted to thank you too for this interview, to 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 be able to talk, to talk this through, to get these points across, to fire out this these. This this philosophy, this weaponry, this to, to to relay to anyone, to here, there, everywhere, that this this yeah, every day I do, I make that two hour commitment, and and I I guess I'm interested in it, but I would rather be spending my time in my in my own progress, my own um, uh, for my own prosperity, and, and I'm not I'm not making money off of. Uh, all of this, <laughs> so uh, it's it, it is yeah. You you are right now. You we we are in an information war. Yes, and, and by you not participating, you're you're. And if you have children, you, you almost have to say. Well, I guess if you're that dense, you you don't understand. You you can't see. What's going on? So I, I I don't want to question that you don't you don't love your child, but if if you I I would say if the, the if you if you if you can't understand what I'm trying to say, then try at the very least to try try to understand what what I'm trying to tell you today, what I'm trying to relay to you today try to make a, even a just some investment in in this information and then if you find something then then push it farther but try to try to find something if it's a half hour put some headphones on you know while you're walking do something while you're at the gym throw something on get gain some more intelligence don't just sit there and be on that bicycle uh, in the gym and, and watching CNN that's that's going on, going on to the, uh, I guess, to the other side. No, it's true. I mean, um, yeah, for single people or people without families, we do have maybe a little bit more time to to hear and, and research about things. But people with families do have that added motivation that they, you know, they want their sons and daughters to have uh, a better world and a better future ahead of them. And at the moment, it's not looking good. That's a big reason why you and I, I'm sure, are are here talking. That everyone wants to be a hero. Everyone wants to, you know, everyone wants to fight for the future. For for it's part of uh, being a developed human being. To to do, you would not want to leave uh, the next generation. In a bad position, or or twenty the twentieth generation from, from now, if you see the if you see these alarm bells, and you don't act, what does it say about you? It just says that you're that you're somewhat of a selfish person. You want to run. All you care about is yourself, and that theme. I hate to say it, but that's that's a theme that I see. In, in 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 some of the friends or family that I see, that the that the main interest is in uh, numero uno, and I don't I don't I don't like having to say that, but that's that's the way I see it. Do you ever feel like um, sort of looking after yourself and escape escaping from society, uh, finding a safe place to hide out? 
for the rest of your life, maybe? That's a great question, and I, I and that one. That's a great question, and and that one. <laughs> I'll leave it up to the imagination of of, of someone. <laughs> if a person, if they thought. Let's put it this way. I have no interest in fighting anyone. So, uh, it, it, what is there? There's two things. What, fight or flight? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, the, the idea of, of running uh, somewhere uh, else has, for a long, long time, I, I've lived in Chicago and thought, I guess this is where I want to be. But I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll throw a hint, I guess, of some sort that uh, the idea of the idea of exiting this country is uh, I've thought about it. Let's put it that way. Um, how, in closing uh, for our interview today, how do you feel about the future? Do you think there's there's any chance that there could be some positive change in your lifetime and that things could work out? I mean. Do you feel there's a way that that could be achieved? On and on, I, I've listened to this. There's another character that I listen to is Max Egan. And for years, he keeps talking about, this is our year, guys. This is our year where we turn it all around. And I used to just shake my head thinking, Max, why are you so positive about this? This is, uh, that's just not where we're at. We're, we're not in a, in a turnaround year. And, the only thing that I can say positive about that is, and I can't remember why, there was something that I saw about how quickly things can change in this information age, about how fast people's opinions can change. So if you... There, that's that is the positive, the only positive spin I see that things can relay around the world so quickly, and we and we're all there is a little bit of a bubbling going on, um, but from a solution perspective, from from my my opinion, if you don't take away the energy source from this, let's call it, the, these New World Order, Mafia, Illuminati, to be nice, we'll call it that. That would be the nice way to phrase it from uh, Mr. Jones's opinion. But if you don't take away their power source, you're not getting out of this. And, 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 the, and right away, if you don't take away their printing of the money, if you don't put that in the power of the people, you're not getting out of this. That's one of their main power sources. You have to take away their ability to print this money and to loan it back to us. We need to print the money. Yeah, that, that's um, that's very true. We had a guest on um, a few episodes ago, Mark Cockin, who said exactly the same thing, actually. Yeah, money does seem to be the key. You're right, though. Um, talking about these things is, is kind of like therapy for me and for a lot of people, but... Um, I just wanted to thank you for uh, for coming on and talking to us today. It's been um, nice hearing your story and hearing hearing about what you what you think. Thank you, Scott. Very much. Thank you. And um, you're always welcome to come back anytime you you'd like to talk again and uh, have have a bit more therapy. Thank you very much. Okay, take it easy then, and uh, have a good day. You too. Bye bye. So it's nice just to talk sometimes. Uh, we wish John well and remind you that if you're listening and would like to come on and say hi, get in contact on Facebook, Twitter, the email scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. You can also email us via YouTube if you go to the About section. Topics coming up in future episodes could include enemies of the state, religious debate on Christianity and atheism, Hollywood secrets, the Dyatlov Pass incident, mysterious celebrity deaths, planned obsolescence. Um, that basically, that's how products are specifically or specially designed to fail, costing us more. Um, more on that later, uh, in later episodes. Um, 
We sometimes do uh, reviews of other shows. John Gary mentioned a few shows that he recommends. Um, I'm going to make a note of those and look into them. I've mostly been listening to Alex Jones, Hagman and Hagman this week. Nothing much to report, uh, but um, I still like those shows. Uh, this is the section where we usually talk about economic markets, sports, space and weather. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about that today. Um, basically, if, if, um, if you do have some expertise in either of those areas please let us know and come on and uh, talk to us we hope to have some weather experts coming on at some point to finish today just wanted to say keep talking to those around you um, it's good to try to help change the mentality of people towards the news and what's happening in the world and to question more uh, as long as we base it on facts and don't just speculate too much then maybe the message will start to get across um, also, a quick uh, shout out to any sponsors, advertisers or people who would be interested in uh, helping to finance this show. Please contact us. We're always looking for uh, also interesting guests or researchers to contact us too. Um, again, the email is scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. I hope you all have a good week. Thanks for listening. Catch you later. Goodbye.